Hey y'all! Welcome to the fifth episode of Space Telescopes, your single point of contact for tweets and observations from space observatories. NASA Universe Even if you can dodge a bullet or catch an arrow, this is something you should step away from. This pulsar, J0002, is a stellar remnant leaving the supernova debris at 2.5 million miles per hour, or, approximately 4 million kilometers per hour. It is traveling so fast that, it will eventually leave our galaxy. If you have watched the recent, Firefly Alpha rocket launch, you can see the similarity. How can you keep count of an endangered species of whale sharks throughout the world? If only scientists could borrow God's eye. Well, they have something close enough. The Groth algorithm developed by Edward J. Groth, for mapping stars and help Hubble keep track of its targets while in orbit, has helped keeping count of these spotted species of sharks. Visit the link in description to know more. What could be awesome than just watching space news? Well, other than working for space agencies themselves, you can be a citizen scientist contributing by going through their data. This movement you saw here is a brown dwarf discovered by one such citizen scientist. It is named as, The Accident. Follow the links in description to know more about, The Accident, and to do your share of discoveries. You gotta love blowing bubbles no matter your age. Same with our galaxy, estimated to have aged around 13.6 billion years, is blowing gamma bubbles of size 25,000 light years in both directions. Detected back in 2010 by Fermi Telescope, these are dubbed as Fermi bubbles. Gamma ray burst monitors on Fermi Telescope, detected not only gamma ray bursts, but also solar flares. When charged particles from sun's atmosphere are released suddenly in the form of solar flares, they produce gamma rays. This image, pictured on a total solar eclipse, shows the flow of charged particles along Sun's magnetic field. Find out more about gamma rays from our Sun, link in description. On the 5th of September 1977, Voyager 1 joined its twin, Voyager 2 in the long journey of exploring the cosmos. From smooching the outer planets, to leaving the solar system, these man-made twins are the first in many. Have you been late to school? Not a surprise, right? But when a pulsar named B125963 produced gamma ray flares two weeks later than usual, scientists were surprised. Orbiting a large star every 3.5 years, this pulsar stellar pair is an interesting odd couple. Hubble, ESA. This picture of the week by Hubble shows a cosmic lightsaber made of jets from a young star hiding in the gas and dust. This rare phenomenon of jets from relatively young stars in star-forming regions, is known as herbig haro objects. In this ESA Hubble flashback, you're seeing the galaxy, IC 335, from edge on. This edge on appearance puts off astronomers, as they cannot classify this galaxy into any known shapes. Do you have the ESA Hubble calendar? If not, here's the image for the month of September. Galaxy NGC 1792. The blue regions indicate young stars, and orange regions indicate old stars. If you would like to get the Hubble calendar, download the free PDF from link in description. Hubble Space Telescope. This is the oldest photograph of the famed Orion Nebula, captured in 1880. It is also one of the first images of deep space objects. From the Mayans to today's civilization, Orion Nebula has inspired and fascinated many. Read more about Orion Nebula's influence on mankind from link below. Purely astronomical. Do you see a galaxy in this Hubble image? Obviously some sharp-eyed people would have spotted many galaxies, but, there is a foreground galaxy hiding in plain sight. The cluster of bright stars in the middle makes up Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy. It is one of our closest neighbors, at 3.5 million light-years. If you have watched our last episode, you might remember NGC 3982. This majestic spiral, about one-third the size of Milky Way, was captured by Hubble. Astronaut Mike Massimino says, this is why Hubble is so good, because it is above the atmosphere. So, it is kind of like looking at the sun from the bottom of the swimming pool versus looking at the sun from above the swimming pool. This image was taken during Hubble servicing mission. Hubble, NASA. If you want to find a party of young stars, turn to Homburg 9. 
This star cluster, with 90% young stars ranging from 10 to 200 million years, is roughly 12 million light years away. Discovered by James Dunlop in the year 1826, the same guy from last episode who discovered NGC 2164, this globular cluster, Caldwell 87, is located in the constellation Horologium at a distance of 50,000 light years. If not to repost, why have multiple accounts, right? As this Herbig Haro object revisits you, may the Hubble Friday force be with you. NASA Exoplanets Last week alone, scientists have confirmed 40 exoplanets of which 37 were found in the data from Kepler. As of now, the number of confirmed exoplanets have crossed 4,500. On screen, you are seeing the percentage of exoplanets found by each method. When it comes to the challenges faced here on Earth and beyond, it takes all of us to make an impact. Join NASA and nine other space agencies for the 10th Annual Space Apps Challenge from October 2nd to 3rd. Register with the link in description. Do you know how scientists communicate with space probes? This 70-meter dish, located in Canberra, Australia, is one of many communication antennae, built as a part of the Deep Space Network to send and receive signals from space missions. Deep Space Network is now getting upgraded for upcoming missions. Watch this 360-degree video on YouTube. Link in description. Chandra Observatory Unlike lenses made of glass, which do not affect the X-rays much, gravitational lenses treat them all equally. With the help of one such lensing effect, astronomers were able to capture X-rays from a black hole system in the early universe, about 12 billion years ago. This lensing helped increase the brightness of the object marked C, by 300 times. Studying this system will help astronomers know about black holes from the early universe. This is NGC 6118, a grand design spiral galaxy, located at a distance of 83 million light years, in the constellation Serpents the Serpent. This galaxy hosted a supernova explosion seen in 2004, that has faded since then with time. The image is upside down. This second image is an almost true color image, that was captured using the very large telescope, VLT. Forming spectacular supernova is not easy. This is Puppies A, formed at the end of a star's life thousands of years ago, creating a neutron star. This explosion flung the star. It's still moving at over 4.8 million kilometers per hour, or 3 million miles per hour, and has traveled approximately 20 light years so far. Integral, ESA. How can you tell if a microquasar is wiggling its tail? This data shows the observation of a galactic microquasar, made by International Gamma Ray Astrophysics Laboratory, or Integral, along with data from NICER and SWIFT observatories. LISA Mission Laser Interferometer Space Antenna, LISA, will be the first gravitational wave observatory in space. Would you like to work for LISA? Visit the link in description to know the openings and eligibility. One more week until the application closes. Hurry up! This is a video made by Anna Kormu, illustrating the working of LISA. You can download this as video or GIF, from the link below. Also, you can find the links to blogs she wrote on making this video and one on LISA. Webb Telescope, NASA. Are you a fan of tennis? Just like your shared interests in astronomy and tennis, James Webb shares some features with tennis. While fans at US Open use human-sized umbrellas for protecting from weather, Webb uses a tennis court-sized shield to protect it from infrared radiation of sun, moon and earth. After launch, Webb Telescope will be placed in orbit around the Lagrange 2.1.5 million kilometers or 0.93 million miles behind Earth, away from Sun. This is around four times the average distance between Earth and Moon. 
Out of the three modes of heat transfer, radiation is the most predominant in space, and sun is a major source of heat radiation in solar system. For a heat-seeking telescope, this would produce noisy image, just like the stars hiding in broad daylight. This five-layer heat shield could prevent the heat from reaching telescope equipment, thus producing noise-free image. Let's put the dimensions aside. How big is the sun shield when placed next to something from our everyday life? I couldn't find a banana, so. Here it is with scientists for scale. When you want to fling something fast, and still hold together with long life, whether it be tennis racket seeking a ball, or space telescope looking at the early universe, you build it with composites. Graphite composites, known for lightweight, strength and stability, are the best choice for James Webb operating at cryogenic temperatures, and tennis rackets for the best serve. This is the central piece of Webb Telescope's mirror frame, the backplane. These are the wing sections of the backplane that folds in during launch. Here you can see the images of the telescope structure arriving at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. I spy with my little eye. This beautiful structure seen here, is the Helix Nebula captured by Hubble in 2014. With Webb Telescope's mid-infrared instrument, scientists will be able to determine the mass, temperature and composition of the dusty disk, surrounding this nebula's aging central star. Space Telescope Science Institute You might have faced the situation of explaining the difference between astronomy and astrology. Hear from an expert working at Space Telescope Science Institute, to understand the difference even better, or share it with those who still confuses them both. This is a recorded live event, so, even if you missed the live, you can watch the replay. Link is in description. Astronomers using the Cerro Tololo Observatory in Chile, captured the glow of stars, and dark tendrils of dust in a nearby galaxy Centaurus A. Researchers, using the Webb Telescope will map the core of this galaxy. Have you read the previous parts of the Spectroscopy 101? If not, hurry up. We are heading towards the end. This part tells you how spectroscopy could provide information about objects in motion. This has been useful in finding exoplanets. Finally, thanks to these magnificent engineering marvels we see beyond our reaches and behind in time. And thanks to you friends, for your patience. Check the video description for links.